So the previous lesson was multiplying with decimals. And what is the, the thing, how do we multiply by decimals? What's the easy way? If I have something like 2.2 um, .2 times uh, 3.7, how would I multiply this? I'm quiet so you guys can answer. Um, like normal, like this, like as regular two digits. I mean, yeah. I don't know how to explain this. <laughs> you just pretend the decimals aren't there. Yeah. <laughs> multiply like normal. So if we have, and for me, I'm gonna do this. Um, I like to put the larger number on top, just because that makes my brain happier. And the commutative property of multiplication says I can multiply in any order and still get the same answer. So we could multiply just like this. Two times seven gives us 14. Two times three gives us six plus one for seven. And then I multiplied everything by that two. So I switched to this two and move over. I do the arrow. Some of you might see the zero. I like the arrow because sometimes we multiply, the answer could involve a zero. And um, that doesn't necessarily let me know I moved over. So that's just whatever your preference is. You don't have to use my way. Two times seven, compare the one, two times three. And seven. So then I've done all of my multiplying. I add. So we got a four. Seven plus four is 11. There we go. So I have eight, 14. Now, where is my decimal going to go? Two places over. Two places over. And why is that? Because there's two decimal spots in the original numbers. You bet. So however many total decimal places are in my problem is how many I include in my answer. I have one here and one here. So I need two here. So eight and 14 hundredths. If you do not like the traditional long multiplication, we could also represent this using an area model where we have the whole numbers being larger boxes and their tenths being smaller boxes. So we have two as a whole number and two tenths, three as the whole number and seven tenths. And then this box is even smaller because it is a decimal times a decimal. So we just go three times two for six. Here is two times seven, which is 14. And there was one decimal in the problem. So there's one in its answer. Three times two is six. There's one decimal place in the problem. So one in the answer. And then I have a two times a four, which is 14 again, and two decimal places all together. So two in my answer. Then I can start adding some values up. I personally like to chunk things. Um, so I might go ahead and grab this row and go six plus 1.4 to get 7.4. And here I have 0.6 and 0.14, which gives me 0.74. And then I can add those together. 7.4 times 0.74 and four. And 11, carry the decimal down, and an eight. So I can get there either way. It's my comfort level with the multiplying. No matter what, this two is multiplying by the seven tenths and the three. Two times the three and the seven tenths. This two, technically, if we put this here, is also then multiplying by the three and the seven tenths. So it all happens. Uh, it's just kind of what you like the most. And then we practice our regular old division because it's handy. So let's look at the fractionally speaking power of 10 task. So here we are given a pairing of expressions, one showing a multiplication and one showing a division. And if we notice, each number that we're either multiplying or dividing by is the reciprocal of the other. So when we have 250 and we're trying to multiply it by one tenth, what does that equal? How would we solve this? Mm 
Is it 250 over one and then flip 10 over one? You bet. So uh, 250 over one, because we're multiplying by uh, a fraction, we need to be multiplying fractions. And then how could we solve this multiplication problem? One tenth equals 0.1. Okay. Um, somebody, I think that was, was that Alex? I Unfortunately, when I make the screen smaller, yes. Okay. So uh, Alex had mentioned that one tenth is equivalent to 0.1. Uh, which is also then a shortcut way of doing this, but let's keep it in fraction form for now. How do we multiply this? Wonder Woman arms. We have, we can multiply straight across with just 250 over 10. Um, you bet, that's, we can go with that. 250 over, uh, two, 250 times one is 250. Zero times 10 is 10, and both of our numbers have zeros. So if we cancel those out, we've just divided by 10, which leaves us 25 over one, which is 25. So one tenth of 20, 250's value is 25. Okay, then if we have 250 and we're being asked to take out 10, how many times can we take 10 out of 250? If we think of that in terms of money, I have $250. How many $10 bills exists within that quantity? Again, we could set do what we did here, set it up as a fraction form. 250 over 10 has me canceling it out. Canceling the zeros out, 25 over one is 25. Um, if we had gone ahead and realized, oh, this is a, a fraction of a whole, what is one tenth worth as a decimal? It's 0 0.10. So if I had 250 times point, or not 0 0.10, just 0 0.1 or 0 0.1, when I'm multiplying, I just add a decimal place in the answer. 250, one time is 250, but then if I tack a decimal place into it, it becomes 25 as a whole. So um, earlier in the quarter, someone was like, well, why do we, what, how can we multiply, but how are we allowed to multiply the, by the reciprocal? Because no matter what, you're trying to find this as a fractional value. Um, and so we're seeing here how it does work out. So take a minute and what is the solution for B? Is it the same or not? And what is it gonna be? Okay, so everybody's responding that's responded at 2.5. Well, that works out because if we put that over one um, and we multiply straight across 250 over 100, cross out those zeros, how many tens can I take out of 25? I can take two and a half out. So 2.5 here. How many 100s can I take out of 250? Well, if I have 200, I can only take 100 out of that twice, a whole amount. And then if I have a 50, that's half of 100. So I can only take out half of 100. So 2.5 also works out that way. What is 48 divided by 10 gonna be? and then 48 times one tenth. Four point eight, four point eight. Ooh, good job. That was a quick answer. And we can logically think of this by saying I have $48. How many whole $10 bills can I take out of that? I can only take out four. And then I have a point eight. Okay, it, same thing if I'm over here and I'm multiplying by the reciprocal of that 10, one tenth is worth 0.1. If I have 48 times 0.1, it means I just add one decimal place to the 48 to get the 4.8. It's the same answer for both of them. All right, 
The other thing, if you notice, dividing by a power of 10, however many zeros you have when you're taking it. So yesterday we talked about when multiplying by powers of 10. So if I had 32 times, you know, 100. Oh, I'm trying to make it bigger by two place values because I'm multiplying it by 100. So that means I just add two place values to it to make it larger. Now I'm doing the opposite of that and dividing out by a power of 10, which means I take away place values to make the number smaller. So if I'm being asked to divide by 10, it means it's asking me to take away a place value here to make this smaller by a place value. Well, instead of the four being in the tens, the four is now in the ones. So that can give you a hint by dividing by 100, how many decimal places is this supposed to then go back and be at? It's gotta go back two places because I'm trying to take out two place values. So instead of it being 48 as a whole number, I now need two decimals because there's two zeros in that to get 0.48, okay? Here, what is one one hundredth worth as a decimal? It's going to be 0.48 because it's worth one hundredth, 0 0.01. 0 0.01. Anything times one is that same number. And I had two decimal places in the problem. So it means I need two in the answer. Okay. It's asking me how many one hundreds, how many hundredths of a value I have here. We got that. Okay. Or I have 48 one hundredth of a time. So 100 being a whole, and it's less than that. So I need less than a whole. All right, so there's that. Now, using that same idea with multiplying and just knowing whenever you multiply by one, that value stays the same. Uh, so you're just moving the decimal around to show the change in place values. So as you guys wrote in the chat, when we have 720 and we times it by 0.1, we keep the 720, but there's one decimal place in the problem, so there is going to be one in the answer. When we have 720 and now we have one decimal place, it becomes 72 as a whole number. The zero holds no value, so we can just drop it and turn it into a simplified 72. Don't throw a decimal in there if it's not holding any value. And then because we have that same value, but now we have two de uh, decimal places in it, that means seven. 0.20, and again, the zero at the end is holding no value, so we drop it to be 7.2. Okay, so same rule applies. Anytime you're multiplying by one, this stays the same. You just need to add however many decimal places was in your problem. So 36 becomes 3.6, 24.5 becomes 2.45, and 1.8 turns into 0.18. Now, what is going to happen to 54 when you multiply it by 100? What does 54 become? 0.54. Excellent. 0.54. What about 9.2? So there's a decimal in here and two in here. Excellent. Somebody, you guys are all writing it. You bet you need to add a zero because you have a 92, but you need three decimal place values. One, two, three. You got to put a zero in there to bump the 92 where it needs to be. So 0 0.092 for our solution. Question four, the last question on this task says, Aaron says, if you multiply a number by one one thousandth, the decimal point of the number moves three places to the left. So that is saying if you multiply it by one thousandth, then whatever your number is, it needs to move three places to the left. Is that true? And why? OK. 
Okay, we have somebody who says, no, that's not accurate. So I could even make up a three. And if it were to be multiplied by 1,000, what's going to happen to that three? Okay, Joe's like, uh, I'm not so sure. What do we think? Because one is the first place, one hundredths is two places, and one thousandths is three places. Yes, because you move the decimal, the amount of places. Yeah, so in this case, we had a whole number of three. So if we plug that in here and multiplied it by a number with three decimal places, it means we would have to move the decimal three places to the left to make it worth less uh, because we have it less than a whole amount of times. So that becomes 0 0.00. .00. Three. So that is true. So sometimes using base 10 blocks diagrams can help us visually represent processes and values so that we can come to solutions or answers to our problems. So the original context is saying Elena used a base 10 diagram to find 372 divided by three. She started by representing 372 with three hundreds, seven tens, and two ones. Then she broke this up into three groups, each containing one one hundred, two tens, and four ones. So the question is um, Elena's diagram for this had seven tens, um, and then, but when that then got broken up into three groups, there were only a total of six tens. Why? Why did we go from having seven tens to three groups with each having only two tens in them? Where'd, where'd the 10th go? Oh, I'm in the wrong view. I need to change this. There we go. So we had seven. Now we have this three times, this three times, and this three times. Why don't we have seven? What happened? Um, because well, three can go into three once and then seven twice, so it would bring it down to one to turn it into twelve. Um, yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way. So when we're trying to divide this out, three evenly divides out of three once, three evenly divides out of seven twice for two tens, and then I had this leftover tens that hmm. wasn't divisible, and so those tens, that one ten got added to the two ones, did it stay as a ten or it got broken into twelve ones? which means that each group then got th four ones in it, okay? So yeah, so what happened was she had to break her tens up into a smaller unit, 10 of a smaller unit to combine with the two that she already had. Um, and so what is the solution to her problem? 124. 124, you got it. So we have the, you know, we have the, regular way of doing that one two and we can verify it mathematically but again this is kind of nice too to then have a visual representation of that so this uh, day's activity also has an extra credit activity in it where you and a group of friends take turns hosting dinner and you're trying to calculate how much it's going to cost because everyone's like, oh, I'll pay for whatever it costs for me to eat. Well, sometimes when you go to the store, based on the size of the packaging, you might buy a package that contains more than you need. So you're going to have this extra. Well, in this case, the story context is saying you're not going to charge somebody for some a part they're not using, you just get to keep the extra. So you really gotta keep in mind how much is each person getting and how much does each individual person's portion cost them, not cost you for each one of those things. So hopefully that makes a little 
more sense. It says you can't buy partial containers. You might have to buy extra of something to make sure you have enough. And keeping in mind that when you're thinking about how much you'll pay at the store, there may be some leftover ingredients, but you're not getting reimbursed for that because the person who's like, I wanna pay for my portion, doesn't have to pay for your leftovers. So that's just something to be aware of in the extra credit activity. All right, so now we're going to be looking at actually dividing decimals. So when it comes to dividing decimals, it kind of relates to fractions a little bit in the sense that we don't divide with decimals. We still have to divide. Like fractions, at least you don't do any dividing. You just multiply that by the reciprocal. In this case, if I had something like um, 27.3 divided by 0.3, the thing is, if I'm setting this up in a regular division way, the amount I start with is called my dividend. It's what I have. And then the amount I'm trying to repeatedly take out of it, I'm trying to find out how many three tenths I have within this amount. This is called my divisor. I cannot have a decimal in my divisor. So I, anybody know what I need to do to that decimal to make it go away and be able to work with a whole number? We're gonna do it, move it aside. So what, how many times does that decimal need to move to let, instead of having three tenths, make it be a whole number? I need to move it back one place. But just like with fractions, what you do to one part, you got to do to the other, because technically we could set this up as a fraction and what you do to one half of your fraction, you gotta do to the other. So that means this also moves back one place value. And all I've done in doing this, we talked earlier about either multiplying or dividing by a power of 10. What lets us increase a value by decimal place? Multiplying by a number with one zero in it. So technically all I have done is multiplied this by a 10 and this by a 10. So now in doing so, I can divide 273 by three. Well, how two can't divide or three can't divide out of two, but it can be taken out of 27 nine times. And three can be taken out of three once. So this solution is 91. There are 91 three tenths in 27 and three tenths. But we don't, we can't have a decimal in the divisor. It's okay. If it had been, we could have had it be here and moved it back one place, which means our quotient then would have been 9.1. Okay. Um, so we can have a decimal in our answer, in our dividend, but not in our divisor when we're solving. So we need to move the decimal as many places on the divisor as it takes to turn it into a whole number. And however many places we move there, we move that same number in our dividend, the number we're trying to divide into, okay? So if I have 0 0.962, and I'm supposed to divide this by 0 0.54, that is saying that I have 0.962, 962 thousandths of something. And I'm wondering how many times I can subtract out 54 hundredths. Well, I cannot divide by a number that contains a decimal. So how many places does the decimal need to move over so that I have 54 as a whole number? Two, you bet. It moves over two places. And because I did that on the outside, I also have to do that on the inside. 
So now it becomes 96.2. And what I like to do just to make sure I don't forget I have a decimal place in my answer, because the decimal place is there in the problem, it's going to go up here in the quotient area where my answer goes. Well, how many times can I take 54 out of 96? I can only take it out one whole time. So then when I take away 54, how much is left over? Six minus four is two, nine minus five is four. Okay, I can't take 54 out of 42, so I know one maxed out. Then I need to bring the two down. So now I'm asking how many times can I take 54 out of 422? And if we're going to do this on our own without a calculator, my trick is I hide when I have large digits, I cover the last number on the last digit on each number to get myself the ability to approximate. So about five times what makes 42? That's the many, most number of times I can take five out of 42. Well, I can take it, everything's right, eight, because five times eight gives me 40. That's the closest I can get to 42. So eight times four is a two. And the three, 32. So I go eight times five is 40 plus three, 43. Is that gonna work? If I have 422, can I take 432 away? Nope. So that means eight's too much. I gotta go down one. So eight, let's try a seven. Seven times four gets us 28. I put the eight there, carry the two. Seven times five is 35 plus two for 37. Then when I find the difference, two minus eight, can't do it, gotta borrow. So now I have 12 minus eight, which is four. I have a one here, can't take seven away from it. Oh, the one up here. Got to borrow from there. Now I have 11 minus 7, which is going to be 44. Okay. The directions say go to the nearest hundredths place or round to the nearest hundredths place. I'm only at the tenths. I got to keep going. But since I don't have a number, I add a zero. So how many times can 54 divide out of 440? Well, we know it was like 43 something when we had an eight, so let's try the eight. Eight times four, 32, carry the three, 43. Oh, not 48, 43, leaving us with a difference of eight. I'm gonna come over here. So we have an eight. Now I gotta add a zero to get to this one. 54 out of 80. Only one time. And I don't really care. It wants us to the nearest hundredth place. I have to find the thousandth place then to find out whether that stays an eight or needs to round up. Is this going to stay an eight or do I need to round it up to a nine based on this being a one? It's going to stay an eight. You bet. So I got 1.78 for an answer, 1.78. Okay, we did that right. Yeah, okay, okay, you bet. So, well, this is, all right. Okay. It, okay, so did I move too fast? Okay, that, that can make sense. Uh, we can also just, for the moment, we also have a calculator on hand of just going 96.2 divided by 54. We're still going to get this. Uh, let's actually see what it would be on the calculator. I don't know. I just got like 800 emails for some reason. Sorry, I got distracted. Like, uh, most of them were from my boss. Oh, oh, I'm recording. So question number two on the homework, because it was generated by a computer, 
given a algorithm with some random numbers, they decided to make the first one a jerk equation and the second one a little nicer. So let's let's take it let's take it a little slower now. So this is saying I have five and fifty eight hundredths, and I'm trying to find out how many times I can subtract nine out of it. I know that this is going to be less than a whole amount because I have less than nine. So that gives me a hint of where my decimal is going to be. We can divide into a number with a decimal. We just can't divide by a number with a decimal. Thankfully, nine is a whole number. So we can just divide as normal. Five and 58 hundredths divided by nine. I, my divide, uh, decimal is there. So I'm going to put it up in my quotient area. And I'll go ahead and plug in a zero just because I know I don't have, I have it zero times. Nine subtracts out of five, zero times. So then I ask, how many times can I subtract out nine from 55? Six. When I take nine out of 55, 56 times, it means I'm taking out. 54. Okay, so then I need to find out well, if I had that much and I take that much out, how much is left behind? I have a one. So I have some left over here, but then I also have this eight I need to get rid of. We never go back to dividing into this original number after our first value. We then are just bringing the number down for each number I have up here. Then I can ask myself, well, how many times can I subtract nine out of 18? How many 18, nines exist within 18? Two do. So when I take out those two sets of nine, I take out 18 and I'm left with nothing. So 62 hundredths is going to be the answer. That would have been so much nicer as a first question. If you ever encounter situations like this and you're a little lost, maybe see if there's a better warm up question a little further down the line. Okay, question three, same setup. Okay, here we have question four gives us something similar, but now we have a negative, but we know the rules with negatives. It's saying I have negative 30. 7.8, and I need to divide it by nine. Okay, if this is what I have, do I need to move the decimal at all? Nope, because this is a whole number. I don't have a decimal in it, so we're good. We can have a decimal in the number we're dividing into. We just can't have one in our divisor. Um, just add a zero if it was 100. Well, if it was, if I was being asked to divide by 100 or 1000, it would be, I moved three numbers over here. So I moved three numbers over here, which then would actually just give me my, my answer. Um, it's just saying take away three decimal places in the problem. I don't know if that answered your question from the chat. So I'm going to say I have a nine and I'm supposed to divide out of it negative 37.8. Now, for me, just because that would be kind of annoying to have in here and it could potentially get lost. I mean, I guess I could include it up here so it doesn't get lost. Um, otherwise, just divide as normal. And when you have a negative, times or divided, multiplied or divided by a positive, you have a negative answer. Whenever your signs are different, when you multiply or divide, you have a negative answer. Whenever signs are the same, multiplying and dividing, you get a positive answer. So then how many times can I take nine out of 37? Yes, I'm glad you answered. I was gonna say a six. I had 36 in my head. So yeah, four, wonderful. So this is going to be a negative four. And when I take nine out of 37, four times, I'm taking out 36, which then leaves me with a one. And then I can bring down this eight. And we've already said 
um, 18 divided by 9 is going to be 2. So point negative 4.2. You can also always double check that your answer is correct by taking your quotient and multiplying it by your divisor because that times that should equal that. Okay, we're all good. All right, so let's. Mm. Ooh, repeating decimals. Okay. The, the big number ones um, were definitely like a lot harder. Yeah. That's uh, I'm jumping down to the problems that involved repeating decimals because that's going to require us to uh, well, actually, that question number one was a repeating decimal thing. So uh, we'll we'll practice that. A little bit. I'm going to select question 14 and see what we get. Oh, okay. Oh, this is where it just has the same one over and over. These are going to be um, uh, multiple choice ones here. So for my question 14, I'm given 1.6 divided by 0 0.9. Okay. What do I need to do in order to start start solving this? Move the decimal over. You bet. So I'm going to start by saying, well, how many decimal places do I need to move on this one? Because it's the controlling factor. I need to move it once here, which means I move it once here. That gives me then 16 divided by nine. So I set it up this way. How many times can I take nine out of 16? Once. And when I do that, um, I get a seven. Took me a second there. Well, I have some leftover, so I need to start adding zeros so I can see what happens here. How many times can I divide out nine from 70? So we have a seven, okay. Seven and uh, seven times nine, 63. Okay. Um, so then when we subtract that, I'm left with seven. Oh, wait. I just had a seven. Nine into 70, seven times. So when we see that what we had then gets repeated, this is going to go on indefinitely. And then what we do to shorten that up is just saying that number with the just the infinite bar over the top of it. I'm saying this is just a repeating decimal. It's going to go on forever. We'll see this whenever uh, like one third as a decimal is 0.3 indefinitely. It just reads 0 0.3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 on your calculator, two thirds, 0 0.6666666 on your calculator. So this just lets us show that this goes on indefinitely, but it's not useful after the first number. So on the multiple choice options for your for your homework, it gave you is it this? Is it this? Or was there some decimal value that had a terminating endpoint? And then you would type that in. Let's see if we got anything a little trickier. Dividing decimals by powers of 10. Okay. Hmm. So I'm now looking at questions 23 to 36 on the homework. Goodness gracious, that's a lot of homework. Okay. So it said, recently, three colleagues from a wealth management managing firm who jointly purchased a lottery ticket won $251.8 million. If the money was split, split equally, how much did each receive? Round to the nearest whole million. So I have 251.8, and I'm going to divide it by three. So I have 251.8.3. Can't go into two, but it can go into 25. 
few mini canes. My multiplication is correct. To get 24, leaving me with one, bring down the one. How many times can I take three out of 11? Three times, great. That means I take out nine and I'm left with two. Oh, there's a decimal there. So I'm gonna put a decimal there. Bring down the eight, three into 28. Nine. Okay, we don't care about anything after this because that would be 27. We don't care because the directions ask to the nearest whole million. That is the whole value. That's the lowest whole number value. So then I'm going to round accordingly based on the value that comes after that. With that being a nine, and that's going to turn into a four. So it would be 84 million dollars. And I got my green check mark well done. Yeah. So here was question 23 on the homework. I have 59 and 466 thousandths divided by 100. Again, we want the context. It's saying I have this much. How many times can I subtract 100 out of it? Well, I don't even have a 100. So I know it's going to be less than a whole time. So that gives me an idea of which direction my decimal needs to move. I have said that whenever we're dividing by a power of 10, it means we're taking this many decimal places away to make this number worth less. We're making it smaller. So if it's there, it means I move to the left two places to show that it can come out. Uh, we can take 100 out 0.59466 times. So multiplying by 100 means we move to the right two places. Dividing by 100 means we take two places away to shrink the value down. So this is the fastest way to do it. So we don't actually have to take the time to do the calculations. We just understand multiplying and dividing by powers of tens mean you're just moving decimals left or right. Uh, I have a five, six, two point, Nine three. They set it up as a divide by 0 0.01. So that's saying I have this one hundredth of a time, or I can just say, oh, I am. Well, in this case, this is where that whole. Oh, what am I actually? Okay. Normally, when it was a whole number, I just moved it this way. Dividing by something means we can also multiply by its reciprocal, right? So if I take 562.93. This is asking me how many pennies, by how many pennies can I take out? Because I'm dividing by 100th. So that's basically instead of dividing how many times can I take that out? Going to be a heck of a lot because if I have $562, each one of those contains 100 pennies. So in this case, instead of dividing by 100, I can copy dot flip, which then, ooh, ooh, it's 100 as a whole number. What do I do when I multiply by a two digit number? with zeros, it means I can move two decimal places to the right. And so there are going to be 56,293 pennies and $562.93. Okay. So it's, if you're not sure, put it in terms of multiplication because we like multiplication. So copy that flip, copy that flip. So fractions and decimals are interchangeable, which is really handy because sometimes one form is going to be easier than the other. Um, the 
I think I covered this earlier on, but just knowing that if you have a point seven three, you have a decimal and you need to turn this into a fraction. What is this decimal's place value? 100. So you just take that and you put it over its place value. Then if possible, reduce. 73 is prime, so I can't do anything with it. If we had had um, 15.15 and we needed to turn it into a fraction, we just pop it over its place value, dropping the decimal, and then reduce. 15 and 100 are divisible by 5. We can do with 3 twentieths. Can I reduce 3 and 20 by anything? No, 3 is prime and 3 does not create 20, so I'm done. Okay, so additionally, if you have a fraction, which we've discussed before because it's a great way of being able to compare fractions, uh, you can convert it to its decimal equivalent. So the homework that I'm looking at says negative 75 twentieths. Well, because we're not, we're just going to make sure that you tack that negative onto the answer. Um, and it says change the fraction or mixed number into an equivalent decimal. So that just says, well, how many times if I have 75, can I take 20 out of it? I can take it out three times, which has me taking out 60, leaving 15 behind. What do I do with this? Ooh. Ha, uh, I tried to keep it as a fraction, not bad. All right, so we don't want a fraction anymore. We now need decimals. I need to get rid of the 15. So I add a decimal to show where I start adding zeros because this is less than a whole. Um, and so then how many times can I take 20 out of 115? Well, I think of it as how many times can I take two out of 15? Two goes out of 15 seven times, 20. Seven times is 140. Then I'm left with one <coughs> and zero. So I got 10. I need to keep going. So if I add another zero, how many 20s exist within 100? Five of them. So there we go. Three and 75 hundredths. We probably also could have figured that out by knowing. We had originally had 15 as a remainder out of 20. Those both reduced by five, which is three fourths, three fourths, three quarters out of four quarters for a dollar, 75 cents, which is 0.75. So um, that instead of having that remainder turn into our numerator, like it did when we had fractions, we are now just adding decimal zeros and we keep going unless it is a repeating number uh, the, the homework I give shows this, but it shows it with a repeating over the, the five. So that's saying it's 3.755555. Did, did I have any left over here? No. So you would type in the quotient is terminating at 3.75. They tried to trick you. Do not let them. Um, You're saying the line is needed on that one or no? It's not. They're going to give you an option where you see the correct number, but there's a line over it. That line would be saying that that five continues on oh. indefinitely. It, it doesn't. It ends. So you wouldn't want their answer. You would type in your own. Okay. So find the decimal approximation for the fraction. Okay. So here I'm looking at question 23 in the fractions, decimals, and order of operations. And it gives me six and two fifteenths. And it wants me to turn this into a decimal. Well, the six is already a whole number. I don't need to do anything to it. I'm just gonna turn that into a six point, but I need to find out what this is. So I'm gonna take, and I have to, how many times can I divide it by 15? Can I take 15 out of two? Nope. So I need this, and then I add a zero. How many times can I take 15 out of 20?
one time. And when I do that, I take 15 out. I now have five remaining. How many 15s are in 50? There's three for 45. Five. Oh, well, looky there. So I just had a five. And look what I got. I have another five again. If I add a zero, it's going to be the same. So this would be a 0.13 repeating. The directions say round to the nearest hundredths as needed. Well, so it's just going to be 16 point or 6.13 because they didn't need all the extra threes. They just need hundredths is two decimal places. So that is everything in a nutshell.